Uh, so my name's Stefano and I'm going to be doing the second talk, which Andreas' talk kind of talked about functions in the small and how you sort of plug them together. I'm going to go a slight bit more of a higher abstraction level um, and sort of programs that, or um, concepts that can kind of help you write more correct programs rather than sort of little pieces that you plug together. So what is the problem? Well, one of them is that it is trivial to introduce runtime errors into JavaScript. Everyone has been caught by null pointer errors here in this room. And it's generally the data you trust the most that ends up burning you, because of course, something can't be null until it actually is, and generally in production on Friday. Um, and of course, you get these beautiful error messages that we can see here. Undefined is not a function. What does that mean? It normally means about half an error, an error going through stack traces, and finding the thing that broke was 50 lines away from what you actually thought it was. Um, so surely we can do better, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you may have heard of this type in Java or Scala, perhaps the option type. Um, what it does is it sort of acts as a container for the possibility that something may or may not be there. Um, and it basically lets you handle the null case in a principled and above all composable way. So it's a, quite a simple type. If the thing is there, it gets wrapped in adjust. If it's not there, you get returned or nothing. You can just see the examples there, it's pretty simple. Um, most libraries have this to maybe function. So you just pass in something that may or may not be null um, and it gets wrapped for you. So that's great, it's wrapped. But obviously you probably want to do something with that. So you're gonna have to take it out of the container at some point. Um, so most, or most libraries again will have this from maybe function. And the interesting thing about this is that you can't actually unwrap the thing in the maybe unless you deal with the fact that it may or may not have worked. So you have to give it a default value there. So you can see in the example there, um, if the thing you're looking for is not there, it, you, you'll, get, you'll get two back. So that's great. You've got it wrapped and you know how to unwrap it, but that's not really very interesting. That's not very useful. You want to do things to the thing that's actually in the container. Um, and how do you do that? Map, which we've already talked about a little bit earlier. Um, so we all know this from arrays, but arrays are just one of thing that can be mapped over. Um, there's lots of them. If you think of an array as a container that can have like zero or many values, um, and map is the thing that applies a function that you give it to the thing in that container. But you can also think of a maybe as a container that takes precisely zero or one items. And we've all seen code like this. I've, I've written it myself. You've basically, you've made this function here null safe without actually putting any logic in to handle the null case. Because you know that an empty array basically is a no op. Um, and as you can see, you apply the function. Uh, if you apply the function all, and the thing is there, the elements in the array get incremented. So maybe types are exactly the same. If you've got a just and you map a function over, the function get applied. Otherwise, nothing happens. You can see there what happens if you don't have this type. You just get a type error again at runtime and chances are in production. So, how do we compose these things together? We might have multiple operations that could fail. Um, so we want to see how we can chain these together, okay? So using what we've seen, let's see, how would we go about composing these options? All right, so let's use map. Okay, that's great. We've, we've created this safe property function and it's, and it's succeeded. So let's apply map again. Okay, that's absolutely useless. Um, <laughs> So we've basically wrapped this thing. And if we want to do this again, we're gonna to have to do map, map, and then map, map, map. And we're just gonna get this hideously um, nested structure. So what do we do? We use the magical flat map, or chain, as it's also known. So we replace the maps with chain. And you'll see why it's called flat map. I think it's actually probably a better name. Um, so same thing. We found the thing that we want, great. Now, when we applied map, we got this. If we use chain, we get this. And what's happened is something that was on two levels has been flattened down onto one. And you can just do as many chains as you want and it will always say the same type and will always have the same amount of levels. Now, what's the point of all this? So th the main thing is that it helps you separate null safety from core logic. So this is kind of like a pseudo imperative piece of code. The main thing that it's meant to do is just go through a list, um, find an object, and if it doesn't find it, it'll return 10, okay? And I, there's actually a bug in there. Uh, so I'll come back to that in a second. Um, 
So we, what we want to do, code the happy path, instead of having to worry about things being null all the time. A couple of convenience functions there. Um, find by ID, which returns a maybe if it doesn't find it. Um, and safe path, which basically just lets us, instead of like doing prop, 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 you just give it a list of keys and it gives you back the object or it gives you back a nothing if it's not there. Now you can see here, you just compose your object and right at the end, you say, if this didn't work, give it back to me, all right? Now, if you look back here, that's fine. We've seen this really defensive code. I've seen this all over the place before. A, it doesn't compose, but B, look, if I don't actually find that object, norm is always going to be undefined. Um, so like that was just a trivial example that I, that I put together. Um, but like if, it's, it's, if you're able to do it like in something as simple as this, what hope have you got in a larger code base? So that's maybes. We'll talk about a couple of other types now. One of them is the either type. It's kind of similar to maybe. It encapsulates failure. Um, but it actually gives you some information about the failure. Because if you get a nothing back, all you know is that it didn't work or it wasn't there. Um, so this is good for having functions that throw exceptions to make them pure. So in other words, their type signatures in line to like, I can give you a number or I can do something absolutely mental and just crash your program. Um, this you always get back something. Um, similar to two maybe, this is how you would actually make a function that, that throws an exception say. Um, you just pass it in the function, you apply it, and then you wrap it in the appropriate type, okay? Here, JSON parse can obviously uh, throw an exception, um, and this is just the application. Again, composition, very similar to maybe, it's the exact same API. Um, here I've just put a, a, a date function here to show that it's not just exceptions. You could make this more granular if you wanted. Um, you could check to see like if someone's passed in 31 days for February or something like that, and give back an appropriate error, but not crash the program. Um, and again, it's very simple here. You encase the program, or you encase JSON Paris, then you've got an, a maybe, or you've got an either, and you map over it. And if you notice, I'm kind of being massively hypocritical here and using an unsafe version of prop. Um, that's just because you, there are ways to basically compose uh, maybes and eithers, but it, I just don't have time to go into that, basically. Um, and again, you use chain because you don't want to get like a left inside a right or a right inside a right. Um, so that's kind of skimming over that bit. So the next, the last one that I'm going to talk about is the future. So again, kind of encodes failure, but what it also does is it has an element of time in it. Um, you basically you pass a future, a success callback and a failure callback. The failure callback has to be provided. Um, so it basically just allows you to compose asynchronous actions. Um, futures are lazy. Um, so you actually, they have a fork method, which actually tells it to do what you want it to do. Um, and this is, allows you to isolate program side effects because you decide when they get affected. Um, and the thing about futures as well is that fork can be called multiple times, so it'll just reevaluate the computation. So obviously you're thinking, this is just basically a promise, and it kind of is. Um, there's some subtle differences. Um, so what a promise then is map, chain, and fork all rolled into one. They're eagerly evaluated, so when you pass a function to then it starts getting evaluated. So you can't control the side effects. Um, they're also resolved once, which is why in Java they're called completable futures. Or, um, so they, they basically keep a state, whereas, as I said, with, with futures, you can just reevaluate them whenever you want. Um, also, error handling is significantly different. Everything's wrapped in a try catch, so if errors can get swallowed. You don't actually have to pass the error callback if you don't want to, so it's easy to forget. Whereas, if you don't, with a future, most programs will actually just crash, or most versions will actually just crash. So how do we use one of these? Again, if you know about promises, this looks incredibly similar. Just reading the file or using, doing a HTTP request. Make sure you pass in your error and your resolve callback. That's great. Say we just want to compose these. Again, if you know how to use a maybe and you know how to use an either, you can use a future. Here, it's just, we're, just read, we're just reading the file. We're parsing it again in a very unsafe way. Um, and then we're trying to get a URL and we're making our H or we're going to make our HTTP request. But if you see, we're not actually making the request. We're just describing the computation. We're not actually doing it. It's only until we call this fork method here that we actually we actually initiate the side effect. Um, so that's pretty much it. I guess the summary for me is that if you know how to use one of these types, you can use them all. They have little subtle differences, and that's just sort of 
around what the container does. Um, you concentrate your logic in one place. So you don't have your code littered with those really defensive if statements that we've seen. And the only reason that they're there is because something broke. I'm almost 100% sure of that. Um, it also allows you to push the unsafe parts of your program to the edge. When you get something, you wrap it in this type. You say, fine, you're dangerous. And then right at the end, you, 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 you program as if everything's perfectly fine. And right at the end, that's when you deal with it. Um, and again, you're forced to deal with it because these types won't work if you don't. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you.